Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to talk a little bit about how power is calculated for electrical circuits. So what we're looking at here, imagine we've got this battery and I've, I've connected it to a light bulb or this could actually be any electrical device designed to run off this 12 volt battery here. And we have a switch and imagine the switch is closed. And what we're going to do now is talk a little bit about how the power would be calculated for the circuit. First thing we have to do is draw the circuit diagram for it. So first of all, the battery over here. The battery uh, we would represent with uh, this voltage symbol, again with a long side meaning the negative or positive terminal, short side being the negative terminal. The light bulb or whatever this object is, it has a certain electrical resistance, uh, R, which is represented with this symbol in the picture. Now, this is all conducting material along here, which means that's all at one potential. And I've already went ahead and color coded the potential here red. So this red is all constant potential. Uh, a very important thing we need to realize is that we're now going to have a current in the circuit. So current is caused by the battery voltage basically driving charge uh, through the circuit. It's important to know the current direction. I drew it over here on the right. The current direction would be up. Had I drawn the current over here, and I'll go ahead and do that, the current would be down. If I draw the current in this part of the branch, it goes this way and over here this way and so forth. No matter where I draw the current, it's important to recognize that I'm going to draw it in a clockwise sense in this picture because the positive charge direction for current is assuming positive charge carriers. So if we are assuming positive charge carriers, and this is the positive terminal of the battery, this is going to be, you know, counterclockwise here will be the positive current direction for the problem. All right. Now imagine this bulb's been running a while, and imagine we walk over to it and we touch it. All right. And I ask people what they think they would experience. Number one answer is ow. You know that we probably would uh, get burnt. That light bulb is going to get hot, and that's that's because the light bulb is constantly giving up energy. And we're going to talk about how or how we would calculate that. And what I want to do here is talk about this product right here: current times voltage. And we're just going to look at the units. Current is measured in coulomb per second, and voltage is measured in volts. But a volt, in a more fundamental sense, is a joule per uh, joule per coulomb because a volt is potential energy measured in joules per unit charge. You'll notice that the product comes out to have units of joule per second. That's an energy transfer rate, right? And that's what we call power. So this is one way which power is calculated in circuits, current times voltage. However, in my previous video, if you've watched it, I talked a little bit about Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. So it's pretty easy to show that if I take this IR term and I sub it where that V is, the resulting equation I get is I squared times R. This is another way that power can be calculated for a circuit. I can also solve this for I, and it would equal V over R, and we can sub that right here, and the resulting equation is going to read power equals V squared over R. So there's three ways in which power uh, can be calculated. Which one you use, it depends on the problem. You use whichever one I guess is most uh, appropriate for the problem you're looking at. There are a couple trends though I'd like to, to point out. One, take a look at this metal one. Power equals I squared R. Power, you'll notice, is very sensitive to current. If you hold the resistance constant and double the current, you're going to have four times the power output. And the power output here at this resistor here represents heat. So as a rule of thumb, you know, heat is very bad for electrical circuits. It's, it's not advantageous to run circuits at high powers, or I'm sorry, at high currents. Now I want to take a look at this first equation here. Power equals current times voltage. Let's just say for the sake of example, we want to run a power of 100 watts. And I'm going to go ahead and put the current in amps and the volts, voltages in volts. So there's lots of combinations that will do that for us. Uh, 50 amps, 2 volts will get us 100 watts. 25 amps, 4 volts will get us 100 watts. 10 amps, 10 volts, 100 watts. Um, 2 amps, 50 volts would give us 100 watts. 1 amp, 100 volts. All of these combinations will give us 100 uh, watt power. But these are going to be very inefficient power transfers because we're going to have lots of current. There's going to be lots of heat. That's going to represent lots of energy loss. 
it's much, much more advantageous to transmit that 100 watts like this, 2 amps 50 volts or 1 amp 100 volts, because as a rule of thumb, higher voltage, lower current circuits are more efficient, and that's better for everyone. More efficient means they create less heat, you're going to pay for less energy, and the circuits last longer. Circuits are the natural enemy of all, uh, or I'm sorry, heat is the natural enemy of all electrical circuits. So just to kind of recap this video, some important things here. You know, really the point here is, well, one, how to draw a quick uh, circuit diagram, right? So in this case, I represent the ball with a resistor, the battery with a voltage. The internal resistance of the battery was just not important for the discussion. I went ahead and left it off. Once we have this circuit drawn, we need to recognize that based on the way I drew this, the current would be counterclockwise, and there would only be one current. That's important to note because there's only one, basically, branch to the circuit. Another important thing, three ways power is calculated, current times voltage, current squared times resistance, voltage squared over resistance. And another important thing in this video is just the fundamental concept that as a rule of thumb, power is very susceptible to current. High current means high heat loss, so it's very advantageous to transmit power at high voltage, low current. And I'll make par uh, problems up later on that talk about why, and consequently uh, look at examples of uh, high voltage versus low current. Hope that this video helps. Make a great day. Have a great day.